In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own fill-in-the-blank custom question slide using the drop-down blocks. I'm Paul Wilson and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. I'd like to ask a small favor of all of you. Turns out that 84% of you are not subscribed to my channel. It's absolutely free if you do so, and I would really appreciate it if you would press that subscribe button. The benefit, of course, is that in return, I will try to make the best Adobe Captivate tutorials I possibly can for you. Today's video is about creating a series of drop-down blocks that will act as essentially a fill-in-the-blank. Now you might be thinking Adobe Captivate has something very similar in the matching question, but the advantage of this solution is twofold. Each of the dropdowns will have a unique set of answers not shared by the others. In the matching question, of course, you'll see all the possible answers jumbled together in all of the dropdowns. Here you won't get that. The other benefit is, of course, we can have our own custom feedback caption where we can add our own audio narration to actually hear the feedback along with the slide audio as well. Let's get started. Okay, so let me explain a little bit about what's on my slide right now here. This is obviously not a regular question slide. The reason I've done this, just for some clarification here, is that when you take a look, there is actually no fill in the blank question slide from the built-in questions in Adobe Captivate. Closest thing is a match the column. So I've built this custom solution that I think is a little bit better than match the column because unfortunately when you match the column, all your answers for all the blanks show up in each dropdown. Here I wanna have specific ones. But let me first of all explain what's on the slide here. So first of all, there is a paragraph block here at the top here. Nothing too crazy. All I did was added a card and kept the body text. We made the body text white and we made the card green. Similarly, we have another paragraph block here. Same idea, the feedback caption for incorrect. We made the card color red. And again, the body text is white. So pretty standard stuff here. We have the question stem, or, or if you will, uh, almost a title really, fill in the blanks, and then followed by a drop-down block and another drop-down block. And again, the advantage I mentioned is that each drop-down block, of course, if I go to the normal state and edit my content, you can see I can put in very specifically what that selection is for each one. I don't have to have all four, north, south, east, west, for all of these here. And the same thing here, each one is unique and that makes it a little bit different than the standard question slide there. And I just wanna put a period at the end of this sentence here, cause it is essentially forming a sentence. I have a button block here with the button already labeled for submit. I've right to align that. So it kind of looks like my other question slides. While I won't be clicking anywhere to proceed, I will display a next button once the learner has got this knowledge check correct. If you're interested in how to do all of this with an actual quiz question to make it scorable and reportable to your LMS, you certainly can reach out to me. I offer one-on-one -on -one instruction and we could set up an hour where I could show you how to build such a slide that also scores. But in this case here, we're just going to do a knowledge check today. So I need to keep track of the answers that our students select from these dropdowns. So I'm gonna to need to store those answers in a variable, and I can go into the window dropdown and select variables. And from here, I can click the plus icon, and we can type in sun, underscore rises for my first variable. This will be a string variable and there will be no initial value. We'll go ahead and create that. Click plus 
and we'll call this one sun underscore sets. Same idea, a string variable. In other words, letters, numbers, whatever you want to type into this variable, it will be acceptable. No initial values required. You could put a description in for each one of these, especially if this is a project that you were sharing with your colleagues at work and you know you want to make sure they understood what these variables represented. I'll go ahead and press create and we'll click outside that variables window to close it. Now let's select the first drop down here and we'll go over to interactions. Now with any selection you could do one thing in this case here. Any selection I'm going to want to clear off the appearance of any feedback captions here. So what we'll do in this case is click on hide. We're going to go to content sections. And here what we specifically want to hide, not the block itself, right? Because that's what this is, but what I've labeled correct feedback. So that's basically the text and the card as well. And while we're here, we might as well also do the incorrect feedback. So regardless of what I do, when I select a new option here, I want to clear that off. Scroll down a little bit, press next, and you can reset the state on slide revisit and click done. Now, for the selection of specifically east or north, we're going to write a little bit of an advanced interaction here. Very simple. If we choose East, we'll click on More. We'll scroll down till we get to Assign Variable. And we'll choose Sunrises, because that's the first one. And we'll select a value of East. Click Done. That's all we need to do for that particular interaction. Now let's do North. So we'll click on More. Scroll pretty much all the way down and assign our variable sunrises a value of north. Press done. So that takes care of storing the value of either east or north in the sunrises variable. Let's select the sunsets drop down. And like before, any selection, we're going to hide any previously displayed captions here. So our card and the text. And this is under content sections, really the same thing as blocks. However, Adobe sometimes is notorious for using different terminology for the same thing in several different places. So you just need to keep that in mind. Press next, and we will reset this state on slide revisit, and we'll click done. Now let's get into the specific selections. So selection of South, we're going to click on More, scroll all the way down, and assign variable sets, sunsets, to be a value of South. Press Done, and we'll do the same thing for West. Click More, assign variable sunsets, a value of West. Click Done. Okay, so that takes care of the selection. There's nothing else you need to do there. Now we're going to look at Submit. So what happens when we press Submit? Well, we're going to do a couple things. But they're all going to be within a conditional advanced interaction. So the idea with conditions is that there can be several conditions that need to be met first before you run the following actions. For us, we're really just looking at two conditions. So let's start off by clicking plus, and we're going to say if our variable sunsets equal to a value of west, press save, but we need another condition to be met, and that's the sun rises, add another condition, and the variable sun rises is equal to a value of east, press save. So we have these two conditions being met. What do we want to have happen? Well, we want to show in our content sections the correct feedback, right? The other thing we want to do is 
go to our objects and allow the student to move forward. So we're gonna show them the next button as well. So they'll see the correct feedback and we'll see the next button as well. Press next and we don't need any animation on that, but I like to select reset state on slide revisit and click done. Now I've already prepared some audio narration for great job, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So we can actually add that. So let's add new action, go to more. Now, in case we're still hearing the media from the first feedback, we can add stop media as an action just to make sure that any crosstalk doesn't occur. I'll press done. And then after that, I'm going to go into more and select play media. And I'm gonna to browse to my desktop. I believe it's this one here. So let's go ahead and open that up. It will load that. We can test it to make sure it's the right clip. Great job. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. You've identified both directions correctly. Okay, that's perfect. We'll click done. One of the things that you can do, it probably doesn't matter in this case, but you can select any group of actions and merge them together so that they run seemingly simultaneously or much faster than if they were individually like that. So that's a little best practice I like to share. Now, let's say they don't get it right. In other words, this condition is not true. It's not equal to west and east. We can go into the else section here and we can show our incorrect feedback. I'm not going to show the next button because I want them to try again. So we'll click next and done. But we are going to play that audio clip as well. So we'll go into more. We'll first of all stop media. Done. And then we will click more and play media. And we'll browse to our other clip, which I think is text to audio three. And we can double check that. Not quite. Try again and think about where the sun appears in the morning sky. Okay, that works right. And we'll click done. And I think we're pretty much good to go. The only thing remaining would be to program our next button to go to the next slide. Click done. And one final thing I like to do is on enter of this slide, I want to set it up so that it's ready to view again. Because the first time you arrive here, we certainly can do that by setting certain settings like for example if i right click on the next button and hide during publish which is fine i can do that but the alternative would be to have an advanced interaction that runs every time i arrive on this slide and you know sets things up the way they should be every time i visit this slide so let's do that we'll click on plus we'll click on slide enter we'll click on hide We'll hide our next button and we'll go to content sections and we will hide both of these objects as well. Click next. Let's preview that and see how it looks. All right, so the sun, let's get it wrong first. The sun rises in the north and sets in the south. So, Not quite. try again and think about where the sun appears in the morning sky. Actually, the answer is right there in my feedback caption. But let's make another choice. The sun rises in the east. Notice that when I make a selection, the old feedback goes away. Remember, I set that as part of the action, selecting anything in this dropdown. Selecting any selection will clear out the old feedback. And we'll do west here. Submit. Great job. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west you've identified both directions correctly. Now, one thing you could do, I didn't think about this, but let's take this a step further. This is working perfectly fine, but you might want to, once they've get it correct, you might want to disable these drop-down selectors and the submit button so they don't change their answer. 
The only thing to remember, of course, is that you'll need to enable those objects if you return to this slide. But let's do that. Close this out. First of all, on submit, if we are in the if portion of this, if everything is correct, we can add a new action that will disable. And what do we want to disable? Well, the two drop down selectors, of course, and our submit button. Click next and done. We won't disable them for you know, when they get it wrong, because we want them to try again. But just when they get it right, we'll disable it. And I'm just going to merge all these together here. And one small thing will change on our slide enter here. Let's, let's add this, is that we will enable our two drop down selectors and the submit button. So that if we do return to this slide, they'll be enabled ready for our learners to use them right away. All right, let's do one more test here. Preview. So we'll select the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. We'll hit submit. Great job. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. You've identified both directions correctly. And if I try to make a change, I cannot. In fact, another thing we could do small thing at this point is to enable the disabled state so that they look disabled when we actually disable them, including the submit button. So we'll enable that button there. Let's try it once more and see how it works. Okay, we'll make our correct selections. Great job. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. You've identified both directions correctly. And now clearly, not only can I not make a change, but it looks like I can't make a change as well. But my learners could press next and continue on with the rest of the e-learning project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.